Hey, this is Cam with Blacktail Studio, and this week I texture my walls, I paint my walls, I get some new lights, and I get rid of a TV, and a lot more. Stay tuned. If you didn't see part one to this series, I will include a link in the video description below, but basically my wife and I bought a new house and I get my very own shop, an actual bona fide detached shop. So I'm making a series of videos on making it my dream shop. And here I was finally moving in. I had my tools here, but I needed to start making it functional. So a friend came up to help me take down this overhead storage, which the inspector said was really quite dangerous and I never intended on keeping it anyway. And if you don't know, material costs right now are through the roof. It's due to COVID and the fires and a bunch of stuff, but this was actually a ton of money in good, useful lumber. So I made sure to keep everything that I could out of this overhead storage rack. One of the things I take for granted working by myself so much is the advantage to increased brain power. And Clark, my friend, he had the idea of just prying that down and having the nails just basically pull out with all that leverage. And I actually wouldn't have thought of that at all. So that worked perfectly. I would have probably sat up there with a sawzall trying to cut the nails. So it was really cool having a friend help for once. And he wasn't a professional drywaller. He was actually pretty embarrassed by what I wanted to do. And what I wanted to do was basically tape up the seams between this OSB. It's actually not drywall and just make it look a little more presentable. I know it's not gonna be invisible. I just wanted to make those seams kind of go away and I knew there'd be a lump there. So he showed me the best possible way, although he really didn't want me giving him any credit for it. I mentioned that my friend was not a professional drywaller, but he has done it on kind of a semi-professional level. So he knew a lot more than me. And it was pretty cool that he showed me that little uh, yellow mesh tape. And he said that basically acts as the rebar to hold this mud in place. So the mud is really hard, but it would crack and kind of crumble out if you didn't have that yellow mesh down. And that mesh is basically just got a real slight adhesive kind of sticky tape to the back of it. And I laid it down, came back with this 90 minute mud, which is the beginner mud. I guess the pros use the really fast setting stuff because they want to get the job done a lot faster. I wanted to be able to cover my mistakes. So I wanted some really slow setting mud. So I got a bunch of this from just Home Depot. Again, it was the 90 minute mud and this actually took quite a long time to dry. So I probably didn't even need that long a setting mud if you're gonna do something similar. He also showed me a little trick of coming back after it's dried and just kind of knocking down the high spots. And I will be adding texture on top of this, but this is a good way of just kind of smoothing that out a little bit. Nobody told me to use a dust mop to clean my walls though. That was my own brilliant idea and I don't actually know that, that was a particularly good idea, but that is what I used to clean off all of that kind of sanding dust from scraping and sanding that drywall mud. One thing I should have done a little bit better was take more time on this prep. I did an okay job with the tape here. And this painter's plastic was really good that I put it down because I had a ton of overspray because I don't know what I'm doing with the airless sprayer, but I should have done even more prep and I'm glad I didn't do this on the inside of our house because it was a mess. You can see here it is OSB, it's not drywall. It's got that really kind of heavy grain wood texture and there's all my patch jobs and all I want to do is smooth this out and it won't look perfect, but I rented a texture machine from Home Depot and the guy told me to buy so much of that texture. He goes, you're gonna need 10 boxes at least, maybe 15 boxes. In the end, I used five boxes and I went really heavy. You can see that it's just this kind of slurry putty mixture that you mix in with some water until you get the right consistency. Then you just spray it on the wall and it was actually a really cool machine. It didn't take long at all and actually had a lot of fun doing it. I'm sure anybody that has done this more than once doesn't need this little silver ball they give you, but I definitely wanted to make sure I got it right. And basically you thin it out until it takes four to five seconds for that silver ball to sink into the mud. And it seems to work pretty well. It's what I used and the texture ended up working just fine. I can't remember how many gallons the hopper held. It wasn't their biggest unit and it was actually more than fine for me. I could spray for, I don't know, at least 30 minutes. By then I wanted a break anyway. The guy told me to make sure that I go test it on a piece of cardboard until I figure my pattern out. And I laughed at him and I told him I will just keep adding texture until I like the way it looks because that was how thick I was gonna go. It wasn't like I was just sprinkling a little bit onto some smooth drywall. I was really trying to cover up some pretty deep gouges. So I went really heavy and this thing was actually really easy to use. You can see there that it gives a pretty easy orange peel from very little work or very little skill I should say and then I just started caking it on and I tried not to go too thick in any one area I didn't want it to like actually slide off 
but you can't see it now. I'll show some really good close-ups at the end, but it worked really, really well and probably took a couple hours. I think it cost like 78 bucks to rent for 24 hours. And then the mud was, I think another like 60 bucks. So really pretty inexpensive to really help the look of the shop. When I was posting this on Instagram, I had someone who genuinely wasn't trolling me. They were just making an observant comment because I said something about my poor prep. And he said, well, you're obviously not worried about overspray with that. What you did was fine, yada, yada, yada. And the problem was I genuinely was worried about overspray. This was me really trying my best to do a really good tape job. So message being spent a little bit more time than I did on the prep. This is definitely not going to be a painting tutorial. I went to Home Depot and I bought this Graco X7, which is, from what I understand, a pretty nice unit. I read, I don't know, at least 15% of the instructions and then I started making paint and I turned the power all the way up because all the way up means the most good and the most paint. Apparently that also leads to the most overspray. So I had paint all over me. I had it up my nose, which I should have been wearing a respirator, and I was later. I had it all over my entire shop. It was really rather poorly done, so kind of a steep learning curve for me, so don't try to emulate what I am doing here. If you're wondering why this is such a dark charcoal, I asked them to tint the Kills primer slightly gray because I was going to be painting the shop a light gray. They tinted it really dark, which is fine. It covered just fine in the end, but that is why I have this charcoal primer. So yeah, that doesn't look right and it's not right. That's the paint sprayer I'd used for about 20 minutes and it started spewing paint everywhere. And yes, everything was tight. I had to actually exchange the entire unit at Home Depot just to get one with a properly functioning hose. Let it dry overnight and then came back. And this is my top coat. And this isn't really what the color looks like because I haven't replaced my lights yet. You'll see when I replace the lights what the color of the shop actually looks like. Right now it looks like a weird eggshell kind of cream color under these very, very yellow shop lights. But this is actually called agreeable gray. It's the same color as our interior. And it's a pretty cool color in the end. It doesn't look great now, but you'll see here in a little bit what it actually looks like. All right, we have the first top coat down of this. It's actually called Agreeable Gray, which is the same color as the interior of our house, so figured we could double dip with using some of the paint inside and out. This is a satin, which is gonna be the same as our laundry room. Normally I like an eggshell for inside, and right now it looks really white. And it's coming from that dark gray primer, which might have been too dark. You can tell it's definitely, definitely gonna need two coats. It's still very wet, it's gonna even out a lot and it'll also darken up as it dries. So we will see what happens, but we are getting closer. It's a lot of work and it's hot. But once I get this paint done, I can start getting some lumber on the walls. That is gonna take a huge quantity of stuff out of my way once I can get that up on the walls. So we are getting closer. I'm genuinely curious what you guys think of these shop update videos and I know they are a departure from my table builds and my other projects and how-to videos because this is definitely not a how-to paint, how-to texture, anything like that. I will say some of the shop update videos are a lot more on theme with some really cool tools that I have coming up, but let me know in the comments what you think of these update videos and it's not trolling, it's just being honest, so I will not be offended no matter what you guys say. So. Just let me know in the comments if you want more videos like this or if you want me to get back to the other types of videos as soon as possible. I have decided there are two types of people. There are radio people in the shop and TV people in the shop. And I am definitely a TV person. I rarely listen to the radio, although I love music. I just don't know why I don't listen to more music while I'm in the shop. I was putting up this TV that I had for got over 10 years and I didn't like how flat it was against the wall. So I brought this other mount in from our house that came with our house and my TV was so old that it wouldn't fit on that mount. So I put some shims back on my original mount, put it back up there, and I didn't like the way it looked. It wasn't shimmed enough, so I took it down again, and then this happened. Now that I decided I was going to be a radio person going forward, I decided I would upgrade my shop lights. And this is something I'd wanted to do since before I moved in. These are old fluorescent, they're super loud, they hum, and they are like a 2700K, which means they are really, really yellow. So I got some new lights on Amazon, but first had to take these ones down. So make sure the power was off, get them down. And here is what I'm working with. These are actually 
shockingly cheap and they work really well. And this is not sponsored at all. I'll add a link to this and everything else in the video description. But these literally cost $20 a piece. These are cheaper than like the four foot ones from Costco. And you can actually link them end to end or hardware them or plug them in. So they are really cool. Again, I bought an eight pack for like 150 bucks. So I think actually cheaper than $20 per and they are 96 inches long. I got these 6,000K, 9,000 lumens. So they are crazy bright too. I mentioned you have several different ways you can wire these. And what I did was I hardwired one of them and then I linked two more to that original one. And that is the most you're allowed to link together. They say you can only run three to a system. And here is how they go together. It is that simple. And then I just added a third one and my shop walls or my shop ceiling was like 24 feet, six inches. And so I just could barely fit all three of these uh, side by side. So it actually made a pretty cool look in the end. And this won't show that because I didn't figure that out until after I wired up the first one, but then I just moved it over a little bit and it worked perfectly. Once all the lights are converted to LED, you won't notice the delay. And I actually don't even know if there is a delay anymore because they all come on at the same time but you can see already how much brighter they are and how much whiter they are. And that is what you want. You don't want yellow light in a shop. You want yellow light in like your living room or your pantry or something like that. I like a bright white light. And a lot of people don't go more than 5,000 K, which is a kind of a daylight. I want a step further, which almost starts to hint at blue light, but I think it looks great. You may want to limit yours to 5,000, but I wouldn't go less than 5,000 K when you're choosing your lights. All right, I'm having to choose my placement in the shop carefully because I have some pretty cool stuff that I'm trying to save for some later videos, but I wanted to give you guys an idea of the texture and what these shop lights ended up looking like after I got everything installed. So here's just kind of a nice plain backdrop, but I'll have a TV eventually. You saw I had some problems with TVs earlier. But here is that texture, and it actually turned out really pretty freaking good for a guy like me. The color is great in here now. You can actually tell that this is a gray paint, not that weird off-white that it looked like with the uh, yellow shop lights that I had. So here, let me give you a little look around. So here's an up close and personal with the texture, not a professional job, but I think it looks pretty good. But look at the difference the color makes with these white lights. I couldn't be happier with this. I really like the 6000K. I don't think it's too blue, but I think 5000 would probably also be fine. You can see the seam in that OSB there, but all in all, I am thrilled with how these lights turned out. For $150, I can't imagine a bigger upgrade you could make for your shop than going from this to this. All in all, pretty good. Here's the old yellow shop, and I had to be really sneaky when I panned through right here. There are some spoilers in there if you want to see some kind of teasers for future videos, but I don't want to show too much. Oh, and I got a new TV eventually, so it's a happy ending after all. All right, this week, start your question or comment with either the word radio or the word TV to let me know which type of person you are. Book people are not eligible, but the good news is book people don't watch my videos. So let me know radio or TV at the start of your comment, and that will let me know you made it all the way to the end of the video, and I promise I will answer all of your questions or comments first. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe for more videos just like this one. Have a great week.